Hello YouTube community, my name is TheJackieFor13 and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. As you can tell, I am standing here in the flesh and uh, I'm using a different type of setup than usually. I have in front of me my phone and that is what I'm using to record the video and I have in front of me as well my audio which I'm using to record on my computer which is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync the two up, see how that sounds. If I don't like it then I'll just fix it in another way later on. But uh, I figured this would be a very interesting manner in which to present this type of video. If I like it, I'll keep it. If not, I'll find something to change it. However, today we're going to be talking about a book. This is going to be the first of many book reviews. So, first and foremost, I know that you guys probably saw it. I have behind me uh, three of my um, most favorite and prized stuffed animals. And you're probably wondering, you're a 22-year-old man, what are you doing with stuffed animals on your bed? Do you sleep with those at night? First and foremost, yes, I do. But uh, secondly, I did set these up for your specific purpose of seeing it and talking about it. So let's go ahead and do that. So since I'm talking about books and I'm talking about things that uh, typically were more involved in my childhood and uh, continued on until probably about teenage years, and I stopped doing once I became more of a quote-unquote adult, and uh, I'm just recently now getting back into, I figured that I'd talk about some of the things that uh, also led me down the path of wanting to reconnect to the sides of myself that I had as a child that I no longer have as much of a connection with. And uh, those stuffed animals behind me are actually a perfect example of that. So going from, I guess, left to right, I think that's how it'll end up showing up, something like that. We have the snow leopard. That one right there is Stelmaria. That one is representative of my sister. I gave my sister a snow leopard at one point. I believe I got it from a um, some store while I was in California. Could be wrong about that. And I got Stelmaria there from a con, a convention, here on uh, on the Eastern Shore. Uh, near, I think it was Katsu Con in, in National Harbor. Um, but because we both have snow leopards, snow leopards are one of my favorite animals, if not my favorite animal. And uh, I wanted to give her that one. I have one for myself very representative of my sister. And so I use that one to sort of stay close to my sister in as best ways as I can. To the right of that one, I have a uh, stuffed bear. It is uh, very clearly one of the typical teddy bear stuffed animals, but it has on it Alaska stuff. And uh, that's from one of my close friends who I haven't really been in contact with as much as I would like to be. But um, she and I uh, had correspondence at one point in which we would send each other letters and stuff. And I still keep that around with me just in case. It reminds me of the people that I've become close to and who either have drifted apart and I care very deeply about but I can't talk to all the time. Or more specifically, her in, uh, in my heart, just to make sure that she knows that I still care about her. So I use that one a lot. Um, and then to the right of that one is a lamprey. I got that while I was in Japan with my friends and it's representative, of course, of my friends making sure that I have all of the people that I think are the most dear and close to me um, as close to me as possible. So I have my sister, of course, representative more so of my sister, but can also represent my family. I have Alex, the bear, who uh, represents the people that are close to me and dear to my heart, but I'm not always able to communicate with and always able to talk to. And then, of course, the lamprey, which is Laszlo, um, who is representative of my friends, of the people that I uh, care deeply about and still have uh, very often or a correspondence with and um yeah you also probably notice on top of Stelmaria maybe very faintly that there is a uh, a character who for those of you who are older time viewers people who have been here for a while you might recognize him a little bit better get you another close look at it there you go all right so today we're going to be talking about a book I just wanted to get that out of the way because it was sort of silly sort of fun and uh give you a little bit more of an insight onto who I am as a person that's what these kind of videos are designed to do um, I want to talk to you guys about my interests and my passions, but I also want to let you in on the the weird psyche that I have and uh, get, get you guys to know about the more eccentric sides of me, the things that I don't always talk about or show or um, demonstrate, even with my friends and my close family and, 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 and all of that, because this is very much a place for me to vent, me to talk about the things that I care deeply about that mean a lot to me. And um, I want you guys to be part of that journey, I guess. Anyway, I've talked enough about that. It's now six minutes into the video and I haven't even mentioned the book that we're talking about. So let's get into that. Today we're going to be talking about this book, East. Um, let's go ahead and show you guys a little bit closer. This book is by Edith Patow. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Very uh, awkward lighting. This light up here could be turned on, but uh, as you can see, it's just as blinding as the other light is. I tried doing it without the lights. It was way too dark. 
camera didn't adjust. We'll just have to deal with this lighting for the now. I might have another light somewhere uh, placed later on in another type of video of this nature when I eventually get around to those, um, in which we will uh, see if we can get a better lighting situation going on. But until then, I'm gonna try and block this light so that we don't have the glare and uh, talk about this book. So, East. Whew, what a mouthful of what I've just said there. But this book was phenomenal. I'm gonna try in these reviews not to talk too in depth about the story and uh, the plot and talk more about my feelings on it and uh, basically only use what's on the back in order to describe what happened in the book. That way you're not spoiled too much. But this book is very much a book that I wish that I could have found when I was a little bit younger because the reading level is closer to that age group. I, I want to say it's probably um, good for young adults in the, I want to say 13 to 17 range would be a very good option for, for this book. Um, the book reading is not too difficult. It's it's very plain English for the most part. There are occasional portions of it where they use more, I want to say exotic, but that's not quite the term because the words that they use are Swedish or Norwegian in nature or some form of Scandinavian, as well as occasional references to Scotland, to France, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, there are words, for example, they talk about... Um, Fransk, which is France in the uh, the language of the main characters, and uh, they use French. I can't actually speak French, so I hope that sounded terrible because that's what it's going for, just to demonstrate that. But parlez-vous français? I think is actually how you're supposed to say it. Whatever the case, um, I don't speak French. I just know that because it's kind of a, a common thing that I've heard people say, oui, oui, huh? you know, that kind of stuff. But um, the book in general is very littered with that kind of uh, language. So if you have a little bit more difficulty understanding or at the very least comprehending decently enough certain uh, Fren French for being one, um, the Scandinavian languages, you'll have a little bit of difficulty with those words, but in general, they're very few and far between. The only main thing that I saw that was a difference in terms of English spelling and how it was pronounced in the book or spelled in the book was born, as in like a, a baby, as in like a child. Um, they kept using Bairn, which is B-A-I-R-N, and I'm fairly certain that that's more of a, an Irish term, but it was being used in this case as if it's also a term for the Swedish Scandinavian language. It possibly could be, I have no clue. But uh, regardless of that, this book obviously takes place in a more Scandinavian setting. Um, they also go to France for portions of it. They stick around the Arctic and near the uh, Greenland-Iceland area for portions of it as well. Um, it just sort of is a, a very big adventure in a world that we're sort of familiar with, but it has magic that we're not so familiar with. And I think that that's a very interesting and wonderful concept that really sets this book apart from other books that are set more around the 1500s form of uh, Scandinavian uh, timelines. I don't think there's many of those. But uh, East is a book that is uh, basically a modern-ish retelling. The book was from 2003. Modern-ish retelling of a folktale known as uh, East of the Sun, West of the Moon, I believe. Um, obviously, that's the English pronunciation of that. There's very clearly not uh, English within the, the original folktale's name because it is from the Scandinavian region. But um, it's a very good book. One that I haven't found any, like, representations of in cinema, which I think is very interesting. Books like this would be rife for the early 2000s boom of movies about more fantastical terms and, and worlds and things of that nature. I would have thought the BBC would have picked up on this almost immediately, but sadly I, I have not seen anything of nature. Possibly it'd be something that I could look into doing into the future if no one else does, because it was very, very good. I think that this book rates uh, among the higher caliber books that I read in, in a very long time. It was one of those books that kept me enthralled from beginning to end, and um, there were very few portions of it where I felt like it dragged on. It got from one stage to the next in a very uh, expeditious manner, and the book itself was just an absolute marvel to read. It's around 450 pages, which it sounds like it's a little bit scary, but um, 
If you take a look at the uh, text within, I'm um, trying not to read too much because this is the end of a chapter, but you can see that the, I'm not sure if this is actually showing as well as it should, but the, the text itself is rather large print, so the book itself is not as large as it seems to be. It is very large still, don't get me wrong, there are five quote-unquote books within inside of it, which are like the main sub uh, main chapters. There are sub-chapters within told from different perspectives, which is another thing that I really liked about this book. It's not told from a singular static perspective of one character. There are about five characters that are, uh, you get to introduce to throughout the time. The main character, who is obviously this girl right here on the front, her name is Rose, and she is uh, very adventurous, very outgoing and trying to find new things about the world, but uh, she doesn't particularly know why that is. There's a, a thing about her birth and, and how she was born that uh, influences that. The reason why the book is named East is because it has to do with directional cardinal positions in which uh, she was born. It's a very superstitious manner in, in which her mother like talks about it. And that's very much littered throughout the entire book, the superstition. And uh, I really like that. It, it could be delved into a little bit more, and I think that would be nice. But what it was delved into in this book was absolutely perfect for the requirements of uh, what the story needed to, to talk about. Um, so she is one. Also, this polar bear is another one of the characters. And for a little while, actually, he speaks pretty much only in poetry, which is very inter interesting. I think that that's a, uh, a fun way of being able to talk about a character's inner monologue and thoughts and how they're interacting with the situation. It makes sense for why his character does this too, because it takes a, a lot of difficulty for the polar bear to actually speak. Reasons being uh, explained throughout the story uh, pretty well. There are also a couple of other main characters that are talked about. You get the perspective of her father, who is talking about what he does in his work um, and, and how he runs their home, their farm and uh, other things that he eventually does throughout the story in, in search of her when she eventually goes uh, goes off with the polar bear and things of that nature. Also, her best uh, brother, the one who like is the closest with her, Nettie, uh, talks with her a decent amount um, and, and does his own sort of inner monologue stuff throughout the book. And there's another character who is the main antagonist in this entire series, but... Uh, She's a very interesting character, and I don't want to spoil too much about who she is, but it has something to do with the magical elements of the world, and you'll see her very quickly into the story, but um, read it for yourself so that you get an idea of what kind of magic is involved, what kind of things happen, and her character is, is very fascinating. I, I don't necessarily think that she is a pure evil character. I think that there are definitely aspects of her that make her complex, and it's one of the things that really made this book interesting because... Um, the main character sort of treats everything in a very black and white, uh, this is good, this is evil context at certain points. And it's not like that. The, the world is very robust and, and it tells stories from the perspective of people that you're supposed to disagree with, people that you're supposed to hate, as if they are in the right. And oftentimes, they sometimes can be in the right, what they are doing. So it's, it's a very, very good book in terms of keeping all of that balanced and um, it's not going to give you an existential crisis on what is good and what is evil. It's not anything like that. But it, it will make you think about, okay, well, why are people and characters acting the way that they do throughout the story? And they'll tell you pretty much straight up to your face when they have their narratives. And uh, it, it helps explain the story uh, in a much better way than if it was just told from a singular static perspective. You can't have a solely one-sided narrative in which the the narrator is omnipotent knows what everyone's thinking or omniscient i should say knows what everything everyone's thinking knows what is good and what is evil they will always have some sort of bias so the way that they balance that out is with this you have a bias of about five maybe six different characters i think it's only five but there may be more i i can't remember it i uh, did read this very quickly uh, because of how much i enjoyed it um, in fact, I read about 350 pages of it yesterday during all of the stuff that I was doing. I was editing If My Heart Had Wings. I was watching for about three and a half hours, four hours, the pay-per-view, which I did a video of not too long before I made this video. Um, and so I, I wasn't able to spend as much time on this book as I possibly could have, but I still read 350 pages. It's a very quick read in, in terms of uh, how long it took me. I read probably close to 70 to 87 pages per hour roughly with this because of how the uh, the font of it is but even if you don't do that the book only took me about five hours total to read 
if you read at a much slower pace, even half that pace, reading 35 pages an hour, it should only be about a 10 hour read, which you can probably knock out in about three or four days of uh, decent reading. Um, we got East is a very good book. I highly recommend it. If I were to give it a, a rating out of five stars, I'd probably give it about a four star rating. Um, it, it was very good. Not the best book I've ever read. Definitely not in my top favorite books of all time. Um, there is a sequel to it, which after the ending of this book, I kind of didn't want to read because I was like, this book ended in such a perfect manner. Why would I ever want to ruin that? But um, the book does have a sequel that I'm thinking about reading in the duology. There might be more coming out eventually too. Edith Patel recently released the book. It was 2018 when the sequel to this book, West, came out. So perhaps she has designs for more to the series uh, in the future. Hopefully she doesn't. I think that this book ended in a, a very apropos way. And if she brings it back for West, I certainly hope she doesn't come back with the North and South uh, to finish out the Cardinal Directions because uh, it could turn out to be disastrous, in my opinion. I think the book ended in a very good way. I hope that West, when I eventually get to that, also ends in a very good way. And we can leave the story where it lay. Um, but she was very fascinated with the characters. And if that's what she wants to write about, go at it, of course. Anyway. Uh, pick up East next time you get a chance to go out to a bookstore or find something online uh, on Audible or something like that. Sadly, I'm not sponsored, so I can't give you a link to help you out with that. But um, yeah, a very good book, East by Edith Patel. Um, I very much recommend it, like I said, four out of five stars. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. This is the first book review. A little bit frenetic. That's kind of how my pace has been lately. I'm not entirely certain what's gotten me into that. I think probably a little bit of the stir craziness and uh, being able to express my thoughts and talk with somebody uh, is really helping me out and making me open up a little bit more than I typically do. But uh, regardless of that, I've talked for 18 minutes. Hopefully you guys got something useful out of this. And if you did, make sure to like the video. If you did like it, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, of course. All the good old YouTube content stuff that you have come to know and either despise or just deal with practically. Um, anyway, Jackhammer13, signing out. Catch you guys next time.